Hey everyone, welcome back to the Race Fi Smokehouse and Grill. And today I'm doing a test with binder and no binder. I wanna see if it really makes a difference. Stick around and we're gonna see if it really matters. Thanks for hanging in there everybody. Today we're doing a test. I'm gonna use one chuck roast and I'm not gonna put a binder on it. The other chuck roast, I'm gonna use a binder of yellow mustard. Now, I typically never use a binder. I've never used a binder, but I do see it being used a lot. So I figured there's gotta be a reason. Let me see if it really makes a difference. So I went and I got two chuck roasts. This one's about 1.8 pounds. This one's 1 1.6 pounds. They're both prime. Got them on sale, which I was lucky. And then I'm just gonna hit it with some SPG and see how it goes from there. See if the bark is better. See if the, the seasoning stick better. Uh, and maybe I'll switch to using binders from now on. But first, I gotta do the test to find out. So here's our chuck roasts that are looking fantastic. And we are going to use, like I said, just yellow mustard on one of them. Get all sides with it. And this one we're not touching, we're only gonna put the rub. The theory behind using a binder is that it helps the seasoning, the rub stick to the meat and it doesn't wash off while the juices are coming out or if you're spritzing it or when you wrap it. So this is supposed to help it really set up on the meat a little bit better. We're gonna see, I've never done it and I've had good luck. Maybe this will change my mind. Let's start rubbing these up. Rubbing with salt, pepper, garlic, kosher salt, coarse black pepper, and a little bit of garlic. I'm using a one-to-one -one ratio on the salt and pepper, and then just some garlic powder. I didn't really even measure to put it in there. And got that one rubbed up, let's hit this one now. Again, no binder on this one. These are rubbed up and looking great. So we're gonna let these rest, let those seasonings really stick. We're gonna go get the Weber Smoky Mountain fired up. Today we're using Jealous Devil Lump Charcoal with a few pieces of oak wood along with a full water pan. I usually use the water pan in the Weber Smoky Mountain because it acts as a heat sink, diffuses some of that heat, and it also keeps some moisture in the chamber. So let's go get that Weber fired up and we'll get these bad boys on the grill. So we've got these chuck roast on the grill. I have internal temp probes in both of them to monitor them. Ambient probes sitting on the grate so I can keep track of the temp of the cooker. We're gonna close this up and we'll come back in a few hours, see how it's doing, give it a spritz, check on those barks. We're gonna try running this at about 275 today, the whole cook. We'll be back. Okay, these chuck roasts have now been going for about two and a half hours. They've hit an internal temp of about 165 degrees. They're both cooking really evenly at the same pace, which is great. We've been maintaining it about between 250 and 275. Perfect, right exactly where we wanna be. So we're gonna check these. I haven't opened this up once yet. So again, about two and a half hours, and we're gonna look to see how this bark is setting up and how these uh, two chuck roasts look. All right, these are both looking really really good take a feel here still got a little bit coming off here these are really tender looking really good uh, the bark isn't a hundred percent set up because I'm still pulling some off when I touch it this is the one with the mustard binder and this is the one without a little bit of rub is still coming off so we're gonna let this continue to set up a little bit more and uh, we're gonna go ahead and probably wrap this in butcher paper at about 175 degrees just so we could get that bark to set up a little bit more we'll be back when it reaches 175 so these chuck roasts have reached an internal temperature of about 175 and they are looking really, really nice here. Take a closer look. The bark has set up really nice. This is the one with no binder. It was a little bit of bigger one. Some of the rub is still coming off, but that is in an area that was really juicy. Check this one here. Yeah, there's still a little that's coming off on here too. Well, as of now, I'm not seeing any real difference. I'm gonna go ahead, wrap these up, let these finish, and then we'll judge them afterwards. But as of right now, they're actually both about the same as far as how much rub's coming off and how well the bark is set up. Let's go ahead, wrap these up, get these back on the grill. These are gonna go to about 203, then we're gonna let it rest for about an hour or more, and then we're gonna slice and get into it. So let's wrap these up real quick.
These are wrapped up, going back on the grill. We're gonna be back after these reach about 203 internal and rest for a good hour or more. So let's get these back on and we'll see you when these are done. So these went to 205 internal temperature. We took them out, we wrapped them, let them rest for two hours. One of these has a slather, one of them does not. We're gonna take a quick look, see if we notice any difference. Off the bat, they look almost identical. Before the wrap, we saw that there was some uh, juices pulling and some of the, the bark did come off on both of them. Looking at it this way, I'm seeing the same thing. So I'm gonna take a quick cut. This one has the binder, this one does not. Cook perfect. Tastes amazing. I was checking to see if you get any of that mustard flavor. You don't. Uh, that's what everybody says. You're not gonna taste the mustard, but it's there to help uh, keep the bark on. This one still has bark coming off of it, just like this one does as well. Is that my fault? I don't think so. I think you're always gonna get a little bark come off. So to me, this test is pretty inconclusive as far as it goes with does the slather help keep bark on? But I'll tell you what, these chuck roasts are awesome. Oh, it's so good. So based on my testing, I honestly don't think a uh, binder matters as far as holding, keeping the rub on the meat, creating more bark. I've never used a binder, and based on this, I don't think I'm going to, but maybe I'll try some more. What do you guys think? Let me know uh, different strategies on how you use binders and why they would help more than not using a binder. If you like what we're doing here, please give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, check us out on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll talk to you soon. I appreciate y'all. Take care. Cheers.